Joining us from South Dakota State Women's Basketball Program, head coach Aaron Johnston, student athletes Paige Meyer and Brooklyn Meyer. We'll do a regular format of an opening statement from coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes, dismiss the student athletes, then come back to questions for coach. Reminder, we do have a microphone. Please state your name and affiliation prior to your question. Go ahead with your opening statement, coach. Well, fun to get a chance to go play in another uh, tournament championship game. I mean, that's kind of what we set out to do a long time ago. And uh, really pleased with the effort we played with today, but I think today is just another great reflection of everything we've been doing all year, quite honestly. Um, things haven't necessarily come easy. We've had to find ways to keep battling and fighting, and and uh, both Paige and, and Brooklyn had just great games, exactly what you would expect from players of their caliber, and, and uh, then we also made some big shots. Ellie had some big ones for us today when we really needed it, so uh, honestly, that's been our kind of our storyline all year, so uh, really excited for the team. They worked really hard for this one. Um, looking forward to a little bit of time here to regroup and get ready for tomorrow. We'll go ahead and open up for questions for the student athletes starting in the front row. Um, Madison Van Mall again with Reaching the Summit. Brooklyn, congrats on your Summit League accolades at the end of the season. Um, you broke Macy Miller's sophomore single season scoring record today. What's it like to be able to just contribute to this program in such a big way? Um, you know, it's been so special, and um, we don't take any of it for granted. Um, I feel like this year especially has just um, really just been special, and um, I'm so lucky to have the teammates and the coaches that I do around me. Jonathan Fernandez, Argus leader. Uh, Brooklyn, in that first half, you guys outscored them 26 to 10 in points in the paint, and then in the second half, uh, ended up being a lot closer, ended up being 36, 32 points in the paint. Did they do anything different defensively to try to keep you guys out of there down low? Um, you know, it was definitely physical down there, but I feel like they were also um, trying to pick on our little guards, and I thought that they did the best job that they could. I felt like they were really tough down there, and so I feel like overall we were just trying to get the best looks at the basket, and whether that was in the paint or kick out threes or any of it. Uh, this is kind of for the both of you. Um, your coach talked about how you guys are usually like the target that they come to Paige in the perimeter, Brooklyn in the paint uh, post area. Can you talk to me about how that feels, how you guys have made adjustments? Because tonight you guys are on fire together. Yeah, you know, I think we have a lot of confidence in everyone. Uh, like coach said, you know, Ellie hit a few big shots. Uh, Sal had Maddie hit a couple big shots. Um, so I think, you know, everyone just has a lot of confidence in each other. And, you know, when our Look is there to score, we'll do that. But otherwise, I think just having confidence in the team. Uh, Paige, a couple of big steals there at the end, uh, something that you've been really good at all year long. Uh, but these felt kind of more important. Um, how, how were you able to just have that anticipation? Because it kind of got tight there near the end, but you just seemed to play loose the whole time. How were you able to stay so up and alert on defense? Um, yeah, coach at halftime just kind of said, you know, defense is what's going to help us win this game. So I think I kind of just um, took that to heart a little bit and wanted to do what I could on defense. Um, Paige, uh, just how difficult is it to guard Grace Larkins and just uh, how do you feel that matchup went today? Yeah, you know, for sure. She's um, a great player coming off the ball screens. Um, she can shoot the ball. So I think it was just a really good team effort. You know, we were all knew we had to kind of play team defense to stop her. For either or both of you, obviously it's not hard to get up for a championship game tomorrow, but you haven't played a back-to-back -back game probably since the non-conference uh, you just played a rivalry game. Obviously, those are pretty emotional. You could play another rival in the title game tomorrow. How do you think you're going to react to having to play back-to-back -back games, especially when you have, have to play so many minutes with, obviously, uh, the fact your numbers have been kind of decreased this year? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a championship game, and I think we're going to bring um, our best effort and our best energy, and um, we're not going to let being tired stop us from um, doing what we need to do. We'll go last question with Grant here. Uh, this one's for either of you. I mean, USD made a couple runs there late in the third and the fourth quarter to try to get it down. I think they had it close to six. How big was it, not just both of you, but the entire team having some sort of bucket to respond and kind of keep them at arm's length and not let them get momentum? Yeah, for sure. Like I said before, you know, we have a lot of confidence in each other. So, you know, when uh, Ellie and Maddie, when they were open on the wing, Brooklyn down low, Mesa, like, yeah, they were ready to hit that shot when they were open. So, Thanks, ladies. You can head back to the locker room. Thank you. We'll go ahead and open up with questions for Coach in the first row here. 
of Coach Madison Van Mulligan with reaching the summit. Mesa had nine today, but at one point, those nine very well could have been the difference in the game. Can you talk about her impact uh, in the paint today? Yeah, Mesa's been great for us in a variety of ways. Uh, her rebounding is is noticeable. She just seems like she goes and gets it in traffic, and she challenges shots. I think she can guard inside and outside. Um, Brooklyn and, and Mesa, I thought, did a great job defensively, and I think the question came up earlier. They they really had to start posting up perimeter players and things, and that was a challenge for us. But that's a result of Mesa and Brooklyn's ability inside. Mesa's free throws late there when, when they started fouling were really important, just come off the bench and have to make a couple big free throws. Um, you know, it's nice to have a fourth-year player that's – as good as Mesa, you know, and, and she's stepped into a huge, huge role for us this year. She's one of our our players that has experience and been around these moments, and she looked really poised, looked really comfortable out there. You're being yanked in Preston to Cone. Coach, uh, 44 40 there after Nicole hits a three. Um, what do you like about the resolve of Madison and even Ellie later in the game, just hitting those jump shots? Yeah, you know, those two have been. Not underrated. I think we all see them, but Paige and Brooklyn require so much attention from other teams. And uh, what Ellie and, and Maddie have done, making shots for us and making plays, has been fantastic this year. And uh, you know they they they've made them in big moments, like key times tonight. You saw there today. You saw that, and they've done that throughout. So um, you know everybody on the team just fits really well in the, what they're trying to get done. Understands what their role is, and they're ready to to step up when when they need to. But um, you know those are really cool moments. That three that Ellie hit late on that inbounds. Um, you know it's a three it goes down the stats, but that's a great moment for Ellie. You know, on a human level, that's a great moment for her and her family and, you know, all the people that follow her. And, and so it's it's fun to see players have those chances. Uh, AJ, what's the routine between now and the title game? And has that changed over the years? Um, no, it hasn't changed much. We'll watch this next game and try and get, you know, a feel for any new wrinkles that either team has. But whoever it will be is going to be familiar with us. We're going to be familiar with them. Um, you know, I, I think for us, this is us, I'm not talking other teams, but for us, it's really about from now going forward, really deciding, you know, if we're going to make that choice to try and finish, you know, are we going to let fatigue, which has been asked of our team a bunch, you're going to let short bench, you're going to let adversity and all these kind of um, boulders coming down the hill at us. Are we going to let those things impact us or not? Are we going to go out there and try and play our best game? So trying to get the right mindset. And that's what we'll really work on here in the next 24 hours. Uh, Coach, uh, how much do you think um, the game against Omaha helped Brooklyn, you know, working with double teams? You know, I think that was where Omaha had a lot of success with sending, you know, two, sometimes even three defenders at her. And she did, I think, struggle a little bit in that game. But I think today, anytime South Dakota sent two or three at her, she handled it much more poise and with much more composure. How much do you think that helped uh, Brooklyn have the success she had today? Yeah, Brooklyn just, she she draws a lot of attention down there. And I think I've said this a lot. That is incredibly difficult to do. You catch the ball with your back to the basket, have people flying at you, not know if it's off the dribble, if it's on the catch, or if it's going to be single coverage. Um, I thought Brooklyn played really well today. Um, I mean, there's just, I don't know that anybody in our league plays through more double teams and triple teams in Brooklyn. Finished well, made free throws, created a lot of offense with her passing. Um, it's just nice to know you have someone like Brooklyn that you can play through, but also Paige. Paige does a lot of that in the perimeter too. So that's uh, a pretty good duel, and uh, they're they're playing at a really high level. Especially considering the situation with Carius where she just had her baby, uh, what was it kind of like having Mike on the other side kind of running a little bit more of the show for them? after all the years where he'd been your lead assistant. Yeah, we had a, a great, you know, almost 10 years working together. We did a lot of really good things, I think, as a program with Mike on staff. We've had a lot of really good assistants over the years. We've been lucky. We've got a great group right now that um, we've had a lot of chances to do other things too. And so it's fun to see everybody grow. And, um, you know, I, it, obviously incredibly experienced. It's nice to have somebody like that on the sideline when you, when you have that come up. But um, just seems like that group, you know, whether it be the coaching staff, also players just handled all of that stuff really well. And they're dealing with a lot this weekend, obviously, as a team. Uh, we've been through some of those things and it just gut wrenching, terrible things they have to go through. But um, you could tell they're all really connected and, and really seamless and, and uh, have worked through some of those challenges. So. You, you touched on some of these uh, younger players or players that maybe haven't had the spotlight excelling in this moment, having that, that spotlight. Can you expand a little bit more on, you know, from a human level, it's got to be cool considering all the things that 
this team's gone through over the year. Uh, and who knows if those players would have been in those positions if everything's perfect. Uh, what's it like to see uh, those players come through here? You know, I think it's a really neat thing. And we've had it a lot this year, I think even more so because of the injuries. So it's been, um, you know, really good talent meets opportunity and make the most of it. But when you look at like our program over the years, uh, we've really just been built on players coming to South Dakota State, staying at South Dakota State, buying into everything that we're doing, developing, working, and then making the most of the opportunity when it comes. And I'm not going to rattle off names here, but I can think of a bunch of players that have kind of stepped into <coughs> roles like that throughout their career. And they've done it in really meaningful times. And so today, when you get a chance to see the group that we just talked about, it's really cool. Um, you know, they're out there trying to do the best they can and certainly players and athletes, but to your question, they're people, you know, and they're just trying to do the best they can. And to see them have those chances and succeed in them is, is pretty cool. We'll go to the last question with Jay here. Uh, maybe some intersection here, uh, but you know, 12th time in 15 years, you guys get a chance to play for a championship and you've been fortunate enough to win 10 of those. But uh, and each of those stories has been unique in its own way, but I'm not sure any of them have approached the uniqueness of this one, given the situations and the circumstances you guys have dealt with. Have, have you allowed yourself to consider where you're at right now, just given all of that? Um, yes and no. I mean, I, I honestly, we don't compare them that much. I think this one's been a year where everything's been so obvious. I mean, you see that group sitting on the end of the bench and you think one more player and that's a starting five right there. You know, so it's so obvious and so public. But I think every year there are times that um, there are challenges you go through as a team. So I don't know where this one ranks, and I think that'd be hard to do, and it probably would sell another team short somewhere along the line. But um, I think rather than comparing them, I would just continue to look at what this team has done has been really impressive. And I think we can just celebrate this team for what they're doing. Um, hopefully they get a chance to bounce back and really play their best basketball tomorrow against whoever it is. And uh, then we can kind of reflect on you know where we're at at that point. But yeah, I think this team's doing great. Really proud of them. I think they feel that, they know that, and, and they're excited to get a chance to play tomorrow. Thanks, Coach. Yep. <laughs> Joining us from University of South Dakota Women's Basketball Program, head coach Kayla Carias, student athletes Carly Duffney and Alexi Hempe. Uh, normal format will be, we'll do an opening statement from coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes, release the student athletes, then come back to questions for coach. As always, just a reminder, there is a microphone. Please wait for that. State your name and affiliation ahead of your question. Go ahead with your opening statement, Coach. Thanks. Uh, really, really proud of our, our group today. You know, just left a really disappointed locker room and uh, probably even more disappointed than any other matchup earlier uh, this year with them because you just feel like you're so close and you feel like, uh, you know, you cut it to six twice, I believe, and, and just uh, some untimely turnovers and, and things that didn't go our way uh, that really solidified it. So, uh, but a lot of improvement from this group. You know, I think the last time we played them, we got doubled up in the rebounding category and we really battled and only lost that category by three today, really kept them off the offensive glass for the most part. Um, you know, obviously had a hard time containing Brooklyn Meyer inside, but thought we gave her a lot of different looks at least and tried doubling her and tried running uh, another person just at her to force her to kick it out and uh, just threw different looks at him. And so we were constantly changing defenses. I thought our level of communication was at a pretty good level for a while there. So um, just love how we competed, love how we battled. You know, we could have just uh, let that nine-point lead, um, uh, you know, it was a 10-point lead, and then Carly hits a, a three right before half, which I thought was a really big bucket. And then you can come out and let that seven turn into 15 really quickly. And I just I just thought we really competed. I just Our coaching staff's really proud of our players for, for sticking with it. We've improved a whole lot and um, hoping there's more basketball left to be played this season. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions for the student-athletes. First row. Eric Bean, Yankton, President of Cone. Alexi, um, just how challenging is it uh, having to go up against Brooklyn Meyer and, and uh, just what, what was kind of the plan going in today? 
Yeah, I mean, she's um, a really good player. Um, she, you know, like Coach said, you throw different defenses at her, and, you know, she's high IQ, very strong and physical. So I think just trying to play, you know, one person can't stop her, so just trying to play team defense against her, limit looks, give her a lot of different types of defenses, um, just trying to keep the game changing while she's playing. But, I mean, she's a great player, really tough to guard. Marcus Trax, or Mitchell Republic. Uh, Carly, can you speak to sort of the mood of the game of you guys were getting close and just could not string together those couple extra baskets to tie the game or take the lead. What was that like for the team? What was the mood? And I guess, how do you reflect on being that close? Um, I think we stayed together a lot. Us having to fight back at different times throughout the game just made us come together more. We all wanted to win so bad. So it's just, even if we were down a bit or they went on a run, we were still staying really together and knew that we could fight back. Carly, coach kind of mentioned it, but you guys, the last two times you played them, you had struggles in the second quarter, and they kind of pulled away in those games. But you had that big three there in the second quarter. And, I mean, they did get a little lead in the second, but you guys battled back. You know, what kind of talk about able to battle back in that second quarter is specifically where you guys have had struggles against the Jacks this year? Um, I think earlier in the season, they would start pulling ahead, and we would just fall apart. They would just keep going on their run, and we wouldn't really do anything in return. So I think being able to stay poised when they were scoring and the crowd was loud and being able to slow down and do our offense and continue playing defense on them kept us in at the second quarter. Any other questions for the student athletes? We'll go last one in front here. Um, Alexi, um, just Carly hit the buzzer beater and then she had another and one in the second half and you just see the energy on her face. Um, just how infectious is Carly's energy uh, just with the team? Yeah, like you said, she makes a lot of big plays um, throughout the season and in this game today. Um, just those big plays she makes, it is very contagious just on like the five of us on the court, but also on our bench and our fans. It really just gets everyone going. Um, and when you see someone making those big plays, it just makes you want to play harder and play harder for each other. Thanks, ladies. You can head back to the locker room. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> We'll go ahead and open up with questions for Coach. We'll start in the front. Just go across. Uh, Madison Van Mulligan with Reaching the Summit. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Nicola Villa Ambrosi and her contribution today? Yeah, she was tremendous. Uh, you know, Nicole's always sat in here yesterday and talked about her defensive effort and how it barely shows up in the box score. And then she went ahead and showed me today. Um, she just was so aggressive and for a large part of the game was our leading scorer, which we haven't really been able to say many times this season. But she was. She was just really aggressive, um, got to the rim a few times, was really the, the first one to start making some shots for us. Um, you know, that's certainly what she's capable of and what you keep telling her. Um, but she's you can see the confidence a little bit more come out in her today. So uh, we praised her in the locker room. You know, I just think that that's a senior right there who sees her, her career slowly um, coming to a close and is taking advantage of every last opportunity. Uh, Coach, you mentioned it. You cut it to six, I think, a couple times there in the second half. Uh, what do you think it was? Was it maybe um, just a lack of communication defensively? I know one of those led to, uh, I think, a three that Ellie end, ended up making. Mm -hmm. um, so... What do you think it was maybe that prevented you guys from maybe getting over that hump and cutting it to maybe just a one possession game? Yeah, it, the lead? it felt like untimely turnovers. Um, it, it just, you know, it felt like uh, one that stood out to me, we cut it to six and Olivia Kiefer's dribbling down and just fires it cross court and Paige Meyer picks it off and goes in for a, a really easy layup. So things like that where you just have to be really tuned in. Um, and th those are huge, huge plays um, that it comes down to. So, and it, it, late in the game too, I think we might've had three turnovers in just the last maybe 90 seconds. Uh, we were all surprised to get to the box score and see we only had 11 for the game, but I think the turnovers, they hurt more. Uh, you know, they converted on them more. So even though we only had 11, um, they turned it into 16 points. And I think that that was a big difference. Coach, uh, it seemed like Nicole really set the tone defensively against Paige Meyer, but just when players were getting into foul trouble, it seemed the team was really prepared defensively to adjust. Um, just what does that say about the players, just the ability to adjust? Yeah, it's it's how far we've come. They, they've really uh, handled that quite well. Uh, I've talked about this before, but when conference play started, we, we weren't playing at a, a really good level, and uh, we really just did a, a reality check showing our players where we line up defensively amongst all the other teams in the league, and 
we were the seventh best defense uh, at that time. And uh, to see all those teams above us, it, it was really motivating. And a month goes by, and now we're up to fifth. And then two more weeks go by, and now we're up to third. And uh, we just saw constant improvement. And it just speaks to their work ethic and their desire to continue to get better uh, for each other because it's such a selfless end of end of the, the court that you've got to be able to dig in and just play hard for each other. And that stuff doesn't show up here. That stuff doesn't get you up here on the podium. And, um, and there's so much growth and it just shows that how, how much they want to win because they're willing to do what it takes on the defensive end. So can't say enough about our, our defensive improvement this season. It's, it's the reason we are uh, standing here with the record that we have right now. JL Smitko Sports. Kayla, you, you talked a little bit about how proud you were of, of the compete in your team today, but obviously I would think over the, the last couple of days, given the emotions that yeah. you guys have been riding uh, over the past week, which is both high and low, uh, does that heighten that pride a little bit, just seeing what your group was able to do and how they were able to rally around each other and kind of yeah. come together at the right time that way? You make me cry, but only because I heard you cry on on TV. So, um, yeah, just I can't say enough. I just think they're tremendous people, and uh, a lot of life happened this week. Um, and we said we, we added a baby win. Um, to the team and then um, unfortunately lost a, a player's father and um, it's, it's so much emotion and our team just is um, so connected that they just felt that um, and uh, I just I think I'm just overly overly proud of this group and uh, their leadership and how they're able to stick together in, in a really really tough week and uh it speaks volumes. I hope we get another chance to play and continue this season because uh, I don't think this group wants to see it end. I think this group deserves another chance and um, to, to be together out there on the floor. I think that was another way that we, we were able to honor um, Darius Holmes today is just, was just our effort and the way that we stayed connected that entire game. So can't say enough about them as people. Just the basketball will end. Their careers will end at some point. And it's, these are the life lessons. These are the, the things that happen that they'll just, I hope they never forget. But last question right here. Um, Zach Borg, Dakota News Now. Jay kind of <laughs> Jay kind of took my he does that. initial question. Yeah. Well, he's very good oh, at his job. Was, he made you cry. <laughs> no, Jay. He makes people cry, too. <laughs> Jay kind of took my initial uh, question right there. So I'll, I'll take the, the next thing I, I had. Obviously, uh, the 21 wins this year, step forward for the program. Obviously, the next one would be getting the title game and certainly beating that, that program yeah. and getting, getting that title game. What do you think is the next step to, to hopefully get over as get over the STSU hump? Obviously, you did it before as an assistant with this program. Yeah. What do you think is the, is the next step to, to to get over that hump? Because you got a little bit closer to them this year, but obviously yeah. there's still a probably one more step up front. There's there's still probably yeah. one more step to make. Yeah, no doubt. I think uh, you're seeing the experience in our players uh, more and more uh, every single game, and uh, can't even compare last year this year with our mentality even coming into th this type of game, this rivalry game. So. Um, love that we're taking those steps and uh, just keep continuing to develop our system. You saw the growth on the defensive end just in one season. So how can we take that now at the end of this season, whenever that may be, and and continue to move it forward? Um, so and and here we're going to lose a you know a couple starters and a couple key players. So how do we get those young players ready to to move into those roles and add those pieces and uh, get get connected even faster than what we did this year? Because once we finally got connected, we started playing some really really good basketball. So um, yeah, really proud. Of, to see the growth and I, I think we're right there. You know, I was asked earlier if we felt like the underdog or we're taking that mindset and I just, I actually don't, I don't really like that comparison for us in this game because I feel like we we are right there and it's uh, it's not a mountain that we couldn't overcome. It was just a couple plays, a couple uh, mental lapses for sure, lost a couple of shooters, untimely turnovers, but uh, you're gonna take a lot of confidence away from this too and uh, know that we'll be back to battle again. Thanks coach. Thank you.